If you visit Al Najaf city, you will see the Golden Dome from several kilometers away. The sunlight reflects brightly from the Golden Dome of the Imam Ali Shrine. This shrine lies at the highest point of Najaf's hill, the Haydari Courtyard or Al Sahan Al Haydari. The interior courtyard of the Imam Ali Shrine is called the Haydari Courtyard or Al Sahan Al Haydari. It was built 700 years ago by Al Sheikh Al Bahai, who lived in the time of Shah Ismail Al Safavi. Over the years, the shrine has been damaged but never completely destroyed. The interior area of the shrine, which includes the mausoleum and the mosque, covers 5,000 square meters. The total area of the shrine and the courtyard is 15,000 square meters. There is a plan to be implemented soon to expand the shrine by 120 square meters on each side of the outer wall, which will make the total area of the shrine 50,000 square meters. The second courtyard wall will be built without destroying any part of the current wall and the area between the two walls will be roofed, leading to more open space. The dome of the shrine used to be painted with the blue porcelain tiles and then it was gold plated at the end of the Savavi era. The director of the Shiat endowment said, we refurbish the golden plates that cover the dome every 30 years and it needs 200 kilograms of 24 karat pure gold. There are five doors leading to the Haidari courtyard, the Qibla door facing Mecca, the big market door, the Al Omara door, the Al Tusi door and the small Al Abayachi door. That last door opens to the market of Abaya makers, which is close to the Al Khadra Mosque, which is the mosque of the late Shiat leader Abu Qasim Al Khoui. The five entrances to the shrine lead directly to a large and unroofed courtyard surrounded by chambers called Awawin, which are adorned with colored and glazed mosaics distributed over two stories. Mosaics come from Iraq's ancient Babylonian civilization which decorated the Ishtar gate and the procession street with mythical animal forms made from blue glazed tiles, which are still standing in the Berlin Museum. The mosaic decorations of the Imam Ali shrine depict plants and flowers. Families come to this courtyard from all over Iraq and foreign countries and stay as long as possible, eating their lunch and their dinner there or in the rooms surrounding this courtyard. Most of the Awawin chambers are used as offices or rooms for the shrine staff and the courtyard is also used for prayer. After you pass the outer courtyard, you will find the hallway with walls decorated with mosaics and mirrors. The mausoleum of Imam Ali is decorated with gold and silver, and visitors put money in its window as donations or to fulfill vows. 
The director of the Shiite Endowment estimates that visitors give about 100 million dinars per month, increasing to nearly half a billion dinars per month during religious occasions. The money is allocated to the director of the shrine staff. He divides the money into shrine maintenance and salaries for the employees, and the rest of the money goes to poor families. The Purifier Hallway Al-Rawaq Al-Mutahar After the visitor exits the courtyard, he goes through the large golden door inlaid with flowers, lines, decorations, and colorants, then enters the center of the rectangular hallway surrounding the Imam's tomb. This hallway is 17 meters high, 31 and a half meters from north to south, and 30 meters from east to west. The hallway walls and ceiling are covered with mirrors of different shapes, colors, and sizes, which are mutually reinforcing and interrelated, leading to a beautiful mosaic and a rare example of a harmonious art. In the middle of the hallway, opposite doors lead the visitor to the inner area of the shrine. The Haidari Inner Area or al rawda al haydariya The inner area of the shrine is square with a height of 17 meters and a width of 13 meters on each side. Its walls are decorated with colored mirrors and mosaics with complementary patterns. The ground is furnished with a glazed marble and the walls glitter with colored marble above eye level. When the visitor takes his first step inside, he is astonished with the glitter of the colorful interior mirrors with asymmetric geometric shapes that continue until you reach the four golden doors, each one of them inlaid with enamel, two of them from the eastern side and two from the northern side. In the middle area of the holy shrine lies the grave of Imam Ali, surrounded by a gorgeous latticework window containing 10 kilograms of pure gold and thousands of kilograms of pure silver. This window was ordered by the Qajari king. At the top of each side of the window is a group of golden lamps, and there are four golden knobs in every corner of the pillars of the window. At the top of the window is written the famous poetry of Ibn Abi al-Hadid al-Mu'tazili commenting on Imam Ali's book, The Rhetoric Approach, or Nahij al-Balagha. This writing is punctuated by the names of the 12 Imams. From the dome ceiling above the grave window, is a gold chandelier hanging from a gold chain. Both of them made from pure gold studded with precious stones, such as the rare large diamond which has impressed merchants and thieves throughout history. The Honorable Golden Dome Al-Qubba al-Dhahabiyya Two domes cover the sacred mausoleum of Imam Ali, peace be upon him. An internal vaulted dome is in the form of a hemisphere and is embroidered with a beautiful mosaic tiles. The dome is 23.5 meters above the ground. The external dome is of bulbous shape which is 18.15 meters high from its base to the top of the dome. The name of Allah sits at its summit, and there is a space between the interior and exterior domes. The diameter of the interior dome is 13.5 meters, while the external diameter of the dome is 16.6 meters. The external shape of the dome is unique, as there is no mosque or shrine dome in the world that matches it. 
The dome of Imam Ali is one of the highest domes and is characterized by its cylindrical base, which increases its prestige and significance. It is considered to be one of the most technically accurate and architecturally coordinated domes, and it is a spectacular sight. The traveler neighbor who visited Najaf in 1765 said, There is not any building in the world more precious than this selling cup. The dome sits on four huge pillars which are angled from the cylindrical base towards the summit of the dome. The pillars are 5.6 meters in height with an outer circumference of 51.85 meters and they have 12 windows to ventilate and light the courtyard. The outside of the dome was covered with ceramic tiles until they were removed in the reign of Nader Shah in 1156 Hijri, who visited Najaf and ordered the ceramic tiles removed and replaced with gold plates. The outer face of the cylindrical base was tiled with square gold plates 24 cm long, while the dome was covered with rectangular-shaped gold plates 31.5 cm by 22 cm. Because of the different sizes of the plates covering the dome, it is not possible to calculate the precise number of the plates by conventional mathematical formulas. This led to a disagreement about the number of the plates between 8,787, as said by Al-Hakim and Abdul Rahman Mirza, and 7,777, as others narrated. 63 kilograms of gold was used for the dome and the gilding work lasted for several years. Ahmed Ali Abbas Musawi, the former director of statistics of Najaf, said that the number of gold plates covering the dome was 9,990 according to an accurate counting by a group of engineers. The Holy Shrine Treasures the Imam Ali Shrine has received many treasures as donations and gifts throughout history. The director of Shiat Endowment said, There is a treasury made of reinforced concrete built in the ground allocated for storing the treasures of the Imam Ali Shrine, including the gifts received by the Muslim from kings, presidents, and dignitaries from all over the world throughout history. This is in addition to the treasures found near the tomb of Imam Ali and the treasures in the Shrine Museum. One of the most valuable and rare treasures is a copy of Holy Quran written on leather by Imam Zain al-Abidin ibn Ali ibn al hussein the grandson of Imam Ali. It was written only 70 years after the appearance of Islam, and this version is a priceless. There are crowns, swords of kings, and rare Iranian Safavi and Qajari carpets. The director added, The shrine museum was neglected, so we keep these treasures in the treasury under the ground, and we promise to display these treasures in the modern museum. Followers of Saddam Hussein's regime were always trying to steal some of these treasures. For example, Oday, Saddam's oldest son, stole a rare Iranian carpet, chandeliers, and gilded doors and sold some of these treasures outside of Iraq. The new Iraqi government has located some of these antiques and is trying to have them returned. There also was a huge library of rare manuscripts that were about to be burned in 1991 by Saddam's regime during the Shabaniya uprising. But the people of Najaf moved them and kept them safe. Some of these manuscripts are now recorded on DVD for study. Because of the historical, cultural and religious importance of Imam Ali, 
The shrine has been visited by Muslims from all sects and by many famous non-Muslims. Some notable visitors have been a representative of the Vatican. of the Catholic Church in Iraq, the Cardinal Emmanuel Delhi. The heads of the religious minorities in Iraq. delegation of Russian universities. The former representative of the Secretary General of the United Nations, Ed Milligert. The former representative of the Secretary General of the United Nations, Dimas Tura. The current representative of the Secretary General of the United Nations, Martin Kopler. The Turkish Prime Minister Rajab Tayyip Erdogan. A Swiss watch was recently produced containing a picture of the Imam Ali shrine because of what Imam Ali represents in the company director's heart. We should know more about this beautiful shrine. Imam Ali is not the only person buried there. Muslims believe that there are two prophets buried on each side of Imam Ali. They are the prophet Adam and the prophet Noah. In addition, two other prophets have been buried in Najaf, the prophet Judah, one of the prophet Joseph's brothers, and the prophet Saleh, who is not mentioned in the Holy Bible. There is no doubt about the existence of the four prophets for Muslims, and that is obvious when people read what Imam Ali's son wrote regarding shrine visitation. It begins, Peace be upon you and your colleagues Adam and Noah, and your neighbors Judah and Saleh. So, this shrine includes the three fathers of the human race. The Prophet Adam, the first father of the human race. The Prophet Noah was the second father after the flood. According to the Prophet Muhammad, Imam Ali is also a father. As he said, you and I, Ali, are the two fathers for this nation. The Shiites believe that the area where Imam Ali is buried in Najaf is the same valley where God talked to the Prophet Moses, according to some Quranic explanations. So they call it Peace Valley or Wadi al Salam. For that reason, Shiites from all over the world bury their dead there. And the cemetery is one of the biggest cemeteries in the world. Imam Ali defended his neighbors in his life, so people called him the neighbor defender or Hamil Jar. The Shiites believe that as a reward from God to Imam Ali, 
the Imam was authorized to protect his neighbors after death from divine punishment for their sins. Finally, we declare to you the Imam Ali portrait as painters imagined him, and we shall listen together to some of his words. من كلام أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب عليه السلام وقد سأله ذعلب اليماني هل رأيت ربك يا أمير المؤمنين؟ فقال عليه السلام أفأعبد ما لا أرى؟ فقال وكيف تراه؟ قال ويلك يا ذعلب لا تراه العيون بمشاهدة العيان ولكن تدركه القلوب بحقائق الإيمان معروف بالدلالات منعوت بالعلامات لا يقاس بالناس ولا يدرك بالحواس يا ذعلب إن ربي قريب من الأشياء غير ملامس بعيد منها غير مباين متكلم لا بروية ظاهر لا بتأويل مباشرة متجل لا باستهلال رؤية بائن لا بمسافة قريب لا بمدانات مريد لا بهمة صانع لا بجارحة دراك لا بخديعة لطيف لا يوصف بالخفاء كبير لا يوصف بالجفاء عظيم العظمة لا يوصف بالعظم جليل الجلالة لا يوصف بالغلظ سميع لا يوصف بآلة بصير لا يوصف بالحاسة رحيم لا يوصف بالرقة قبل كل شيء فلا يقال شيء قبله وبعد كل شيء فلا يقال له بعده هو في الأشياء كلها غير متمازج بها ولا بائن عنها موجود لا بعد عدم فاعل لا باضطرار مقدر لا بحركة لا تحويه الأماكن ولا تضمنه الأوقات ولا تحده الصفات ولا تأخذه السنات سبق الأوقات كونه والعدم وجوده والابتداء أزله كان ربا إذ لا مربوب وإلها إذ لا مألوه وعالما إذ لا معلوم وسميعا إذ لا مسموع تعن الوجوه لعظمته وتجب القلوب من مخافته وتتهالك النفوس على مراضيه أسأل وريد جوابي لي منه الصبح حجة ولي وإنه بريد أسأل بعد بمن شدتكم تنجلي